So this is Seaopolis 2, the sequel to the original Seaopolis mod pack developed by mod pack maker Ben. And it sees us start out here in the middle of the ocean. We actually have a pretty interesting spawn here right at the start. I don't believe this is the same for everyone. You might start in the middle of nowhere with no giant ship right next to you. But uh, right out of the gate, I do notice that we've got a huge ship right next to us, which I'm instantly thinking is going to be a great source of wool and potentially a very easy way for us to make a bed right at the start of the playthrough here. There are also a few spheres underwater that kind of resemble the initial starting base from the old C block. And it's quite possible, in fact, because I don't think, yeah, there's nothing beneath this little like starting platform that we begin on. Um, it's quite possible that we might end up inhabiting one of these as our main base going forward. There are also a few little like ducks or, or birds of some persuasion around us as well. But essentially, this is a brand new 1.19.2 questing mod pack. Uh, if we go ahead and open up the quest book here, which you can either do by opening your inventory and clicking quests, or if you go into the settings, you can set a keybind. And then if you just press that keybind, it will open up the quest book for you, which is much easier and faster. It says, read the quest. The quest will help you on your way to survival in the ocean. The world contains only two biomes, ocean and lukewarm ocean. Various structures spawn both above uh, and below the waters. Going below level 60 will deal damage to you in the water. So currently, it seems like if we go below Y level 60, damage will be dealt. We also have B books, which can be used to buy items in the shop. And so I believe the idea here is that as we go forward and as we complete quests, we're going to get B books as rewards like this. And then we can use those B books in the shop, which is just its own quest line. And this allows us to trade in those B-Bucks for specific items. Like there's a building wand here, the infinity wand actually, which is usually quite expensive, usually requires a nether start to craft, but uh, would be very nice for us to have in terms of building. We've got some storage draw upgrades and some draw keys. There's an elytra right at the top there. So potentially some early game flight as well, once we get 64 B-Bucks available to us. So the basic quest line here just gives us a bunch of information about all of the different aspects of the pack, but we'll get to those slowly but surely as we progress forward. The very first quest line that we want to start with here is Survival 101 with basic materials. The first quest says driftwood crates, various structures contain driftwood crates. When broken, they will drop useful items. So right out of the gate here, we can just go ahead and break these crates. And if we hold down our FTB Ultimine key, we can go ahead and break all of them at the same time. And that's going to give us a couple of items. We got some mud, we got a spruce sampling, an apple, a silkworm, and a stick. Now you may notice that a lot of these items here, in fact, almost all of them have an EMC value. That does mean that we have Project E in the pack. However, I do think it's a pretty late game addition in this mod pack. Uh, if we look at the quest lines, right down at the bottom where it says the real end game, this is where we can craft the Philosopher's Stone, which is kind of the gateway into some of the really overpowered stuff from Project E. And in order to get the Philosopher's Stone, we need Creative Essence. And to get Creative Essence, we have to get quite far into quite a few other mods. So uh, thankfully, it looks like Project E isn't going to be too overpowered at the beginning of the pack. And I actually quite like this because it does mean that there are absolutely no singularities or crazy creative item recipes right at the end of this pack, which is a nice, refreshing change of pace from some of the other mod packs that we've been playing recently. For now, though, I do believe that what we should be able to do is uh, claim all of our quest rewards by clicking this little button in at the top right. That's because we've kind of passively completed a few of these quests here. And I do believe that we can now plant our sapling, in this case, a spruce sapling, onto the mud that we get from the crates. We then do have the mod that lets us shift to make our trees grow faster. Fantastic. At which point we can also hold down our Ultimine key and break, hopefully, the entire tree at once. Nice. Cool. From there, I would assume that we can make a regular Minecraft crafting table. We totally can. I don't know if we have Tinker's Construct in the pack. It doesn't look like we do, which is interesting. So there's also no crafting station. That is fine. Let's go ahead and drop down our regular crafting table. I am extremely tempted to, uh, before it gets too dark and before mobs start spawning on this boat, I'm tempted to head on over and see if I can't steal a few pieces of wool to allow me to very quickly make a bed. I assume at some point fairly soon we'll come over and we'll try 
salvage what this ship has to offer. But for the time being, we can just head back, craft up a regular Minecraft bed, and uh, and skip whatever scariness might be awaiting us at night, either in the sea or on the boat. Nice. So the boat does seem pretty empty. Is that a penguin that just spawned on the boat? Let me quickly go check here. Chan is right in that we could live on the boat if we wanted to. But uh, I'm going to be real with you. And my ability to uh, expand this boat in a way that's going to look good is um, it's not ideal. So we have a trap door. There is what looks like a comparator in here. Oh, look at this. We got some torches. So early game food, which could prove useful, as well as some seeds and some iron. Nice. Those seeds specifically could come in quite useful later on down the line. Is there anything behind here? Maybe like a hidden chest? Whenever I see redstone like this, it does worry me because I'm worried it's booby trapped in some way, shape or form. It is entirely possible that there is something more inside of the ship here. There is, or at least it looks like there is. Oh, is there anything? I really should have made an X before I came out to the ship here. I don't know if there actually is anything there. There's a prismarine staircase. It's possible we could break that and there might be something underneath it. For now though, let us see if we can't get home, which might be easier said than done, given that we've uh, kind of trapped ourselves here. If I do something like this, can I escape? I totally can. All right. So if we head on back over to our main island, we can of course grow even more uh, spruce trees using the mud here. However, I do think one of the first things we're going to do is try and get real dirt so we can uh, expand much more quickly and get much more wood without having to go and find more of those driftwood crates to get even more of uh, of the mud here. But uh, before we do that, we do have a recipe for wooden shears, which is super nice, super easy. There is also a quest to break down some of the driftwood into driftwood planks. So the, drift, uh, the driftwood being this stuff right here. Real quick, I'm going to go ahead and uh, sort my inventory. It's middle mouse button, by the way, to uh, organize your inventory automatically like that. And then once we have a regular X, let's see if we can't get some of this driftwood here. And break that down into driftwood planks. I don't know if we specifically need driftwood logs and planks, but I assume this is maybe a way to get to the crafting table, even if you happen to get incredibly unlucky and maybe don't get a sampling from the dr uh, the driftwood crate, possibly. Um, either way, uh, we now have quests to make a regular Minecraft chest, which seems like it would be a good investment because our inventory is already staggeringly messy. Let me get rid of almost everything in here because we don't need to be carrying around almost any of this stuff at this moment in time. I'll also throw a few torches down here as well, just in case we do end up kind of... Uh, Going far enough away from here at night for it to start spawning mobs, that is not something we want to contend with until we have uh, the weaponry and armor to uh, to deal with it. And also we get four chests right out of the gate, which is, uh, is fantastic. Uh, we are going to have to do something like this to make sure that we don't place down these chests incorrectly. Because in the new versions of Minecraft, if you shift right click, the uh, chests can go down next to each other, but they won't uh, connect, which is not uh, ideal in this scenario. Either way, let us take a look here at what we can do. We can craft two planks together to make our shears. And presumably, the idea here is that we can take our spruce sapling, grow that into a spruce tree. And then if we hold down our ultimine key, we can harvest all of the leaves here at once in actual leaf form. From there, we can make a leafy stew, which is made with four leaves and a bowl. This is a fantastic early game source of food. It gives you three chicken legs and 15 chicken legs of saturation. Uh, so thank you to Ben for adding that there. That is very nice indeed. So we just make a regular Minecraft bowl and craft that with four leaves. And look at that. Do these stack? They do stack. That is incredible. And that is a fantastic early game source of food that I'm going to be very happy to have with uh, surprisingly no downside either, which you love to see. Over on this side, we have a quest to make a wooden hopper, which also should not be too difficult. Let's go ahead and uh, harvest the entirety of this tree just to get us a bit more in the way of wood. And then if we do something like this, I believe the recipe for a wooden hopper is exactly the same as a regular hopper, but with wood instead of iron. Fantastic. Then from there, there's a wooden crook and a silkworm. So we do have ex nihilo in the pack to begin with. It does look like ex nihilo has new textures. This crook looks a lot nicer than it did previously, and this silkworm looks a lot more detailed than uh, the little white blob that uh, that used to be the ex nihilo silkworm. Now, I do want to be careful here because this does appear to be our last sapling, 
and I was about to infest this tree with uh, with silkworms, but I think what we want to do instead is use the crook to break the leaves here. Breaking leaves with a crook not only gives you silkworms, but it has a much higher chance of giving you samplings, which is why we got 12 samplings from this one tree, where usually you might get one or two if you're lucky. Either way, now that we have 12 samplings, we can go ahead, plant one more, and we can infest the leaves of this tree with the silkworm. So if we right click the silkworm onto the tree, technically you only need one silkworm and that will slowly but surely uh, spread and infest the whole tree. But uh, if you do a few of them here, then these are not hard to come by, the silkworms, they're pretty uh, cheap. And so uh, if you put a few of them in, it just makes it faster. While we wait for that, there is a quest here as well for the uh, the barrel. Again, this is a new texture for Ex Nihilo, which I do think looks very nice compared to the old texture. So uh, if we do something like this, we can get spruce slabs. And if we craft six spruce planks with one spruce slab, we get a spruce barrel. And the spruce barrel here can be used to compact down things like leaves into dirt. So if you place in, I think it's eight leaves, the barrel will then slowly but surely, and actually fairly quickly, begin transforming that into dirt. Nice. Uh, the texture was a little bit buggy there, not quite sure why it was black, but either way, uh, this tree is now, I believe, fully infested because those leaves at the top are not connected to the, uh, the other leaves. In fact, if I do this, like if I put a, a leaf there, will that get infected? It will, and that will spread the infection, I hope, up to the, uh, the top leaves as well. It totally does, nice. So uh, we'll wait for that, we'll give it a few more seconds. Uh, over here, there is a quest for crafting the ultimate from the crafting automat mod. Super easy recipe. This just requires a bunch of crafting tables. So we'll do one, two, three, four, five of those, and then craft those in a little plus pattern like so. The quest says an automatic crafting table requires a redstone pulse to craft. And we actually get two of them right out of the gate here, which is very nice to see. And then after that, we can craft an auto workbench, which just says auto crafting table, and it's actually just a straight craft. So I am not quite sure what the difference is between these two. Let's take a look. If we put down the first one, this one is a crafting table that I assume can do like regular basic crafts. We'll come back to that in just a second once we get some wood. If we go ahead and ultimine the infested leaves, we get a ton of string, which is the, the main thing that we're after here. For us, it's kind of less important because of course we have our ship here, which has given us kind of the, the massive amount of wool that we need for that early game start. But if you don't spawn next to a giant ship, you can instead craft one wool from four string, like so, and then you can get enough string to make three wool, at which point you can then make a regular Minecraft bed. For us, we can just go ahead, pick this bed up, complete the quest, and at that point, we should be, I think, pretty close to finishing this quest line here. Yeah, we just got one quest, I think, right up at the top, which is don't be alone. A friend, a duck sack. So that's the first quest line completed here. Untitled Duck Mod. <laughs> Look at that. That is fantastic. Hello, my friend. Welcome to the island. I hope you're gonna be of, of, of good use around here. He's got such small legs. That is incredible. Please leave a comment on, uh, on the YouTube video here, letting me know what you think we should call this guy. And uh, as soon as we get a name tank, I will, uh, I will name him. I don't even know if I want to leave him out too too much just now, because I think he might die if we leave him out. We need to we need to make some kind of home for him before we leave him out, you know, full time. But we can always put him down when we need a little bit of um of hope, maybe a little bit of uh, of inspiration. Either way, back over here, um, I'm being told by Ben, the creator of the mod pack, not to use the auto workbench because the auto workbench is going to cause my game to crash. So currently, I'm going to put this away, and this one here looks pretty straightforward i would assume having never played with this mod before that uh what we want to do here is get some kind of redstone signal i assume a button will do the trick and then if we kind of teach it the craft which is uh, a spruce log into spruce planks we could then maybe put the logs in there and then press the button to craft it yes I do see it's got like a, a hole there. I don't know if that's an output slot, maybe. Did I get those? Did I pick those up? Hold on, let me, I've got 17 planks. Oh yeah, no, it just ejects it out of the front there. Only it's like a dispenser that's been, that's been dressed up. I see, okay, cool. So I wonder then, can I put a chest in front of this guy? And I actually already had a chest. I don't know why I picked up one that was already down. Let me uh, replace that like so. If I 
try that again. Is that going to eject into here? It totally is. That is actually super cool because it means that really early on in the pack here, we can put down a hopper. We could put in, obviously, it, we don't need to auto craft the crafting of logs into planks. It's a super easy recipe that we can obviously do manually. But uh, the idea of it here is that we could automate uh, quite a few things by pumping items into the top of this, like so. And then if we get some kind of timer or some kind of clock, which I think might be coming up, yeah, there's a redstone clock down here at the bottom of the next quest line. That's going to allow us to continually give a redstone signal to this uh, crafting automate and therefore automate the crafting of whatever recipe we decide to put in here, which is super nifty, especially because we can make a lot of these very easily and the wooden hoppers as well are not particularly difficult to make, which is very nice indeed. Onto stone though, we have the string mesh. So the string mesh here is just nine string. That is a fairly familiar recipe. And thankfully we have a lot of string here. We can make a lot of those string meshes. From there, we can make a drying table and a sieve. So the drying table is a string mesh with six sticks. The sieve is just four oak planks, a slab, and two sticks. It doesn't have to be oak, obviously. It can be any wood you want. And in our case, we have a spruce wood ready to go. So if we just do something like that, that's gonna get us a sieve. And while we're here, we might as well go ahead and make the drying rack as well, like so. We did get given an extra mesh here as a quest reward, which is very nice indeed. And we could definitely do with expanding the base out here a little bit. I think for the time being, what I might do real quick is kind of pick up some of, I quite like the driftwood that we have down. And so I might pick up a few of these driftwood logs and just try and expand this little island a bit using driftwood planks. Okay, so a little bit of renovation later, and we now have a little bit more space to work with on our pseudo raft here. So let's take a look at using the sieve and the drying table. So the drying table says that it can be used to dry items, and the sieve says it requires a mesh inside to sieve items. Up to nine sieves can be used at once if placed in a three by three uh, when the middle block is used. So we can get more efficient at using the sieve and we can use multiple of these drying racks at the same time. In fact, if we go to GAI here and I press U while hovering over the table, we can see what we can dry. So we can dry any kind of meat, raw meat into jerky. We can dry any sapling into a dead bush and we can dry any bundled flesh, which is for rotten flesh into leather. I think that is going to be the most useful recipe of all, simply because right now we have no other way of getting leather especially given that we are in an ocean biome. And as the quest book said right at the beginning here, the only biomes available in the pack are ocean and lukewarm ocean. So I think no matter where we go, no passive mobs are going to spawn because passive mobs don't normally spawn in ocean biomes. Pack over at the spruce sieve, we can right click to place in the mesh. And then from there, presumably we can do some kind of sifting. So it says sifting dirt will find pebbles, which can be used to make different stones. So we have five dirt. And if we go ahead and sift some of that dirt by just holding down right click, we get granite pebbles, basalt pebbles, calcite pebbles, and stone pebbles. Now, I assume that we can craft four stone into a cobblestone. We can indeed, fantastic. That is in fact the next quest on the quest line. And thankfully we do get a bunch of pebbles given to us as quest rewards here. So we aren't gonna have to do too much of this sifting. And uh, there is also a quest that tells us that we can cook a regular Minecraft apple into a cooked apple, which seems like it would be incredibly beneficial here. Slightly more beneficial than the leaves thing because apples, if we automate the, uh, the production of wood, if we get some kind of tree farm going, uh, if we have maybe bonsai pots in the pack or botany pots, potentially, we do have botany pots. These are a way of automatically growing plants. If we use the botany pot in the future to automatically grow wood, we could then set up a system that automatically gets apples from that automatic tree growing system and, and smelts them into cooked apples, which is gonna be a, an easier and more automatable source of food than trying to rely on the uh, leafy stew, even if the leafy stew is a better source of food. There is a quest for a click machine up here. The click machine is made with any of the pebbles that we get from sifting dirt with a wooden hopper and a chest. And I assume that this can automatically left click or right click for us which could be interesting. And there's also a basic item collector. Can collect items dropped within a three by three by three area. So this is kind of a, um, a cut down version of some of the higher end 
item collectors that are normally available kind of later on in, in packs like this. Usually they require like ender pearls and blaze powder and obsidian and all that stuff. So uh, having a cheap one here could be very useful to us early on in the pack. And I assume this quest line here to unlock the crucible is going to be how we get lava. So uh, if we quickly smelt up just a regular piece of spruce here, that's going to get us a charcoal. Once we have a charcoal, we should be able to unlock the torch quest instantaneously because we got those torches from the boat earlier on in the episode. And then from there, we can make any old crucible, which is just spruce logs, a spruce slab, and two spruce sticks. That is going to require us to get at least one more spruce tree going here. At which point, boom and boom, we get ourselves a crucible. I don't think we're going to do the second one, but if we do, we can always come back. And if memory serves me right, we can then place down a torch, place the crucible on top of that torch, like so, claim all of our quest rewards here. And I assume the idea here is that we can use this to melt leaves and saplings into water, but can we not use this to make lava? We might be able to. It's possible we need a different crucible, like a better crucible, one that's made with clay and dust, because I think that the wooden crucible that we have right now is gonna burn if we try and make lava in it. In that case, I don't know if we necessarily need this because we are surrounded by water on all of the sides. There is water everywhere. So we'll put that away for now. We'll just dump it over in one of these chests here and we'll come back to that should we need it. Of course, we can smelt regular old cobblestone into stone. And then from there, the redstone clock requires zero redstone whatsoever. It's one stone with four buttons. And that seems very easy for us to do. Four buttons. One, two, three, four, and boom. There is our redstone clock. And so in theory now, we could use this uh, next to the crafting automate here to automate a crafting recipe. Let's give it a test. We'll put this in. We'll put these in here. And presumably, it works. Nice. It's not particularly fast. It emits a signal every two seconds. So it's not the fastest thing in the world, but it is auto crafting in the very first episode, which is super nifty. Let's claim our rewards. And let's also see, I guess, about crafting up the clicking machine and the basic item collector. I wonder if the idea here is that we can use the clicking machine to automatically sift for us. That would be pretty useful. I'm thinking, is there a quest to make a, um, a bonsai pot? Because if the clay is not that hard to get, which it could be, but if it's not that hard to get, it's possible that we could get a, uh, a botany pot, sorry, not a bonsai pot. It's possible we could get a botany pot fairly early on, use that to automatically produce leaves and saplings that we could then automatically turn into dirt using the spruce barrel that we could then potentially auto sieve using the clicker and that we could then send around into an automate with a redstone clock next to it to automatically produce things like cobblestone, stone, andesite, granite, etc. Everything that we generate from sifting, uh, sifting dirt. That could be somewhat useful. I'm not too sure if that's going to be necessary, but that would be nifty. So for the clicker, we just need to make a chest and then boom, that is done. I do want to see if this works. I'm, I think it will. If I put the clicker down like this, that is facing the, uh, the sieve there. Inside of here, we can change the number of clicks per second. It says powered by rainbow magic, which is fantastic. This sliding bar does nothing. It goes from one click per second all the way up to one click per second which is, uh, is fantastic. You can toggle whether or not it's uh, sneaking when it does its right clicking. I don't believe that's required for uh, this. I don't think that's something that needs to be done. Oh no, so if it sneak right clicks, it's gonna pop the mesh out, which is not what we want, so we can get that turned off. And then if I take this dirt and place the dirt in, so there's a few things actually. I assume I can place the dirt in the clicker. If I were to quickly steal this wooden hopper and I fed that wooden hopper into the clicker. Could we then put the dirt in the wooden hopper, have it fed down to the clicker, and then have it automatically sift for us? We totally can, that is fantastic. And then I assume that the idea here 
is that we can then use the item collector, which we're about to make, to automatically gather all of those resources, at which point the next question becomes, how do we start storing all of this junk that we're getting? And of course, that is the next quest line. It is storage drawers, a super nifty mod that's going to allow us to store a ton of items very efficiently. Before we get too carried away with ourselves, though, let's see if we can't make the staggering number of wooden hoppers that we need to make this item collector. We need five chests just to get the hoppers going, and we're actually going to need even more wood here. Okay, so a few more trees chopped later. We should have, I think, everything that we're going to need here to make the advanced item collector. If we do something like this, we can then place our chests here. Boom, that gets us five wooden hoppers, at which point we can go boom, and boom, that gets us a basic item collector. That is another sub-chapter of the Survival 101 questline complete. And now I think it is going to be in our best interest here to get some storage drawers. So what we could do is we could put a chest down and we could put the item collector on the chest and it would pick up any items dropped within a three by three by three radius around it and it would put those items into the chest. However, what might be better potentially, let me check real quick. How much stuff do we get from sifting dirt? It looks like quite a bit of stuff. There are 10 different kinds of pebbles that we get from sifting dirt, which is less than ideal because there are a few different types of storage drawer. There is one that can hold one item, but a lot of it. There's one that can hold two items, but half as much of each. And then there's one that can hold four items, but only a quarter as much of each item as the first one, if that makes sense. But um, unfortunately, that does mean that even the two by two storage drawer can only hold four items, which means that we'd need three of them to be able to hold all 10 things that we get from sifting dirt. And I don't know if we currently have a, an easy or even craftable way of moving stuff around, although I do see that fairly shortly here, once we start the hammer time quest line, we are gonna unlock an item pipe, which is gonna make our lives a whole heck of a lot easier. And so despite saying that I wasn't gonna do it mere moments ago, I think the best solution for the time being is going to be to do something like, I was gonna say like this and put it on top there, but I'm thinking about how we want to do this because what if, we move the clicker to the top of the sieve. If we do something like this, I assume that there's a way for me to rotate that. I probably need some kind of wrench. The pipe wrench is super close to being unlocked. Okay, real quick, we're gonna move on from Survival 101. We do wanna come back and set up a mob farm by the looks of it. It says here that hostile mobs will spawn in dark areas and in the ocean. I do, oh, you're not a hostile mob, you're just a, or just a regular old duck of some persuasion or a bird potentially. But um, there are some mobs over there. I'm gonna sleep real quick. I think we are going to want to set up a kind of, um, just like a regular old mob farm, a, a dark box somewhere, and then potentially use vector plates here to move those mobs to their uh, demise. But if we take a bit of a jump forward to the hammer time quest line, which just wants us to make a hammer, which is made by the looks of it with two cobblestone, and two sticks. Interesting, you can't use cobblestone. I wonder if it needs to be regular stone or if it has to be like anything but that. Yeah, regular stone, even wood by the looks of it, which is interesting. Can a wooden hammer do what I want it to do? It completes the quest, which is good to know. And then from there, breaking cobblestone with a hammer makes gravel. So if we take our cobblestone here, we break that using the hammer, holding the ultimine key, that's gonna give us the gravel. Then we can sift the gravel into flint. Once we have two flint, we can't make the item pipe yet. That requires eight flint, but we can make the pipe wrench. And I'm really hopeful that the pipe wrench here is capable of rotating the clicker. Even if it's not, we are going to need the pipe wrench in order to configure our pipes, both item and fluid. These are gonna be used to move items and fluids from place to place fairly shortly. But uh, if I right click this, can I rotate it? I cannot. It's a little awkward, but I think all it means is that we're gonna have to put like a plank or any block here, break the clicker, which unfortunately doesn't use a tool. So no matter, even if you use a tool here, it's not any faster. This is the fastest you can break it. But once you have it, I think we then want to try and kind of place this up against the, uh, the wood there. So if we shift right click like that, that is now pointing down at the sieve. From there, we can of course add even more sieves to the mix. 
And according to the quest book, we should be able to use nine of these at a time. So real quick, let's see if we can't make eight more spruce sieves. And boom, there is our eighth sieve. Getting eight meshes is gonna be super easy for us. We've got so much string available to craft with. So let's go ahead and take all seven of those. Thankfully, they do stack, which is fantastic. I have a feeling that in older versions of Ex Nihilo, those didn't stack. So the fact they now do is uh, a nice quality of life improvement. And then over here, if we do something like this, we should be able to then place a, uh, a string mesh into every single one of these. And now, if we were to say, put all four gravel into here, it's gonna start sifting four gravel at a time as opposed to doing just the one at a time, which is nice. It's gonna make it a lot faster, oh, to nine times faster if we, uh, if we have enough resources to pump into this thing. We're so close, we got uh, five out of six. I actually don't know. Oh, so this actually, I, I've put this here, but I have a feeling that this is the wrong place to put it. I know we just went through the whole thing of me putting it here, but I think if I put it here, we're gonna waste resources because I think what happens is the clicker will right click onto here, but as soon as an item pops out, it'll get stuck in the clicking block and will be deleted. So I think what we actually want to do is quickly craft up another X. And instead of placing the clicker at the top, I think we wanna place the clicker at the bottom pointing upwards like this into the mesh. And then from there, what we can do is we can take our chest, this one right here. We can place that chest above the slab that I've temporarily placed down like so. And then the idea here is that we can then place the item collector right about there. And that should work just fine. There should be enough space around the item collector like if an item lands here, I said that the item collector's on, so it's not picking up anything. Um, if I um, blacklist flint real quick and I drop an item down here, there's enough space there for the item to not just instantly despawn. And so uh, we can go ahead and take flint off the blacklist. And uh, this is not configurable at all, which makes sense. But uh, this should be able to collect any item that is generated by sifting using the setup. And then if we really wanted to, we could do something with the uh, the wooden hoppers, for example, if we get another chest here and we do something like this, we could uh, place two wooden hoppers down, let's say here and here, to automatically feed over into the clicker, right? So we could do this and this. And so now anytime we want to feed something over to the clicker, uh, some dirt, some gravel, whatever it is, we can just place it into this hopper. In fact, we could even take it, of course, one step further. If we get another chest, we can place that chest down like so. And now we have a fully automated setup where we place items in at the one side and the finished product comes out at the other, which is super nifty. We also have the flint now required to make our first set of item pipes from the pipes mod that is gonna require two more chests, which we're almost able to make. Can I mix and match woods? I totally can, fantastic. So boom and boom, there are eight item pipes. These are required here because they're going to allow us to extract from this top chest here and insert into storage drawers, which is kind of the long-term idea. So let me uh, claim our extra eight pipes as well here. So it looks like if we want to unlock the botany pot, this thing right here, which is going to allow us to automatically grow trees and plants. The idea being that we can take those trees and plants, you know, whether it's saplings or, you know, wheat seeds, pumpkin seeds, we've got quite a few things over here that we could uh, grow beetroot seeds, melon seeds, whatever it is we grow, we could then take whatever we're growing out of the body pot, pump it automatically around into a spruce barrel using our item pipes. That's gonna turn all of those, you know, organic items into dirt. We can then pump that organic dirt from the barrel over into the chest and then from the chest round into the clicker. The clicker's then gonna sieve the dirt and turn it into the pebbles that we can then get a large amount of. And of course we could then uh, take it one step further. We could then set up a little crafter this guy right here, the crafting automat, with a, uh, a redstone clock to automatically craft the cobblestone pebbles into cobblestone. And then I don't think we have access to an auto hammer just yet, although I assume that at some point, fairly soon, there's gonna be an automatic way of us getting, uh, of turning cobblestone into gravel. Once we have that, we could then set up another one of these little three by three uh, sieves here, sieve setups here to turn uh, to sieve the gravel that we get from those pebbles automatically as well, which will be quite useful. But we are getting a little bit ahead of ourselves here. Let's first see if we can't get the uh, the fluid pipe here 
the fluid pipe does first require that we get sand, and sand requires that we get yet more gravel. And so what I think we're gonna wanna do is kind of bulk craft some of this stuff. So if we get some more dirt, we can get some more um, wood, first of all. Once we have more wood, we can make some more barrels, and I'm gonna use the barrels to make some more dirt, and I think we'll use our first few pieces of dirt just to grow more trees. Once we have a bunch of trees down, we can then use the uh, the wooden shear recipe to get a ton of leaves, and then we can use that massive ton of leaves to get a ton more dirt, and then once we have a ton of dirt, we can start dumping it into our sifting system. And I think initially we're gonna have to do all this manually, but the idea is that we're gonna work towards trying to automate this, hopefully in the uh, in the fairly short term. So once we've done something like this, where we have more dirt and more trees grown, then we can go ahead and craft up probably more than one set of shears, because I have a feeling these shears are gonna break real fast once we start uh, using this many leaves. Yeah, like that didn't even get all of the, uh, all of the leaves that are here, but uh, we can then take those, place those into the barrels that we just made, and already we are running out of space here. Uh, let's do something like this, and we'll even move the initial barrel over like that, but now we can start taking all of our leaves, dumping those into the spruce barrels, and we can start making dirt much more quickly. And then we'll just kind of repeat this process of growing trees, shearing leaves, turning those leaves into dirt, and then taking that dirt and dumping it into this chest here to be automatically sifted. Okay, so I'm gonna try setting up a little bit of the automation here. If we do something like this, and we get all of the barrels down, like that. We can then do the same thing on top, like this. And we can place another chest down, maybe for symmetry, over on this side, like this, maybe even facing that way, like that. So we've got a bit of symmetry going on um, on either side of that. What we can now do, although that's in the wrong location, Isaac, uh, the symmetry is nice, but uh, if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. So let's try instead putting that like there. The idea being here, that we can use our pipe wrench if we shift right click on the side that connects to the chest, that's going to extract from the chest at a rate of four items every 20 ticks. For those who don't know, there are 20 ticks per second in Minecraft. So this is basically four items per second will be extracted from this chest. So if we put leaves in here, those will be extracted and inserted into the barrels. We can then go down to the bottom, set all of these to extract like so. And what that is gonna do is that's gonna wait for the item here to turn from compost into dirt. And once it has turned from compost into dirt, the dirt is then gonna be automatically extracted round to this chest and then using these hoppers, which really don't need to be hoppers anymore. I know we just put them down, but um, that was a little bit foolish. We can get rid of both of these and replace those with pipes. We just need a pipe here and here, like that. Again, set this to extract by shift right clicking. That's gonna take all of the items out of this chest and send them around into the clicker. We don't necessarily need the chest here. We could go straight to the clicker, but just in case we do ever get to a point where we're making the dirt faster than we're able to sift it, it's gonna be nice to have some kind of buffer available for that. So this is now fully automated, at least in terms of once we have the uh, the leaves, it's fully automated. Obviously, we now want to automate the first part where we actually get things that we can turn into dirt. But the good news is that we now have almost a stack of stone pebbles here, which we can grab and craft up into a bunch of cobblestone. We can then drop all of this down on the ground. And using our wooden hammer, we can alter mine this into gravel. We do wanna turn at least one of these into sand, although I assume we're probably gonna to want to do more than one here because we need one sand to make one glass, but then if we're gonna make the fluid pipes, we do need two glass. Uh, thankfully, we did get sand as a reward for making sand, so uh, all we need to do is just drop some fuel into our furnace. That's gonna get us the two glass that we need, at which point we should be basically good to go. We need six flint, which is gonna require us to sift a little bit of the gravel here. Again, another benefit of having this chest here is that we can insert things to be sifted that are not just dirt by dropping them in the chest, such as gravel. That should get us six flints, I hope, at which point we can then craft up the fluid pipes. And the fluid pipes are required in this pack because uh, right now we actually don't have 
any way of making a bucket. The, the bucket that we first make is the clay bucket, and the clay bucket requires clay, but the clay requires water to be in a barrel. So the way that we get around that is by using the crucible that we made earlier. We can place this crucible down, like this. We can then use a fluid pipe to move water from this crucible over and into a, a wooden barrel. So I am going to make yet another wooden barrel. Thankfully, one of the side benefits of cutting down so many trees is that we do now have a, a very nice supply of wood ready to go. And so if we put a wooden barrel here, we're going to put saplings or leaves into the crucible like so. That's going to then begin turning those saplings into water. As you can see, very slowly, but surely that is going to produce a thousand millibuckets of water. Once we have one bucket's worth of water, aka a thousand millibuckets, we can extract it using a fluid pipe into the spruce barrel. And then from there, we can right click a block of dust onto that spruce barrel. And that's going to combine the water with the dust to make a block of clay. Dust we get in the exact same way that we get sand. We just place down the sand, break it with a hammer, and we get dust. Nice. So do we have two glass? We do. Do we have six flint? We do. Bang on. Fantastic. If we do something like this and like this, that's going to get us eight fluid pipes. We can set this here to extract using our pipes wrench. Shift right click. That's going to then begin moving that water over into here. I am fairly certain that it requires a full bucket of water for this to happen. So right now, if I were to try right clicking with the dust, nothing would happen. But once we get to uh, 1000 millibuckets, we will be able to make that happen. While we wait for that, though, um, it looks like there is one more step along the bottom here. Sifting dust makes much smaller dust. We might as well complete that quest by dropping the dust in and letting our system sift that for us. I'm being told by the pack maker, Ben here, that placing a torch underneath the uh, crucible is actually going to make it faster. Um, which I guess means that we're melting the saplings into water. I'm not quite sure of the, uh, the logic of how that works, but it does appear to be faster than what we had going on previously. So for now, we'll just do something like that. And hopefully that's going to get us our water just that little bit faster. In fact, it looks like a campfire is an even better heat source. This is going to make the uh, crucible eight times faster than it was previously, whereas the torch here uh, only makes it four times faster. So this is going to be two times faster than the torch was and eight times faster than all of this was previously. So we're now getting eight millibuckets every, uh, every time it ticks over, as opposed to the, the one that we were getting before, which is fantastic. We should have that any second now. And once we have one bucket of water, we can right click. That gets us a block of clay. And then from there, we can do all kinds of things. So now that's going to unlock the pottery quest line for us. Can we craft our block of clay into clay? We cannot. This is always the one thing that I wish was just a vanilla Minecraft feature, the ability to craft blocks of clay into clay. But we can, of course, place it down and get ourselves some clay balls. Now, if we want a botany pot, we need five blocks of terracotta, so five blocks of clay smelted, along with a regular flower pot, which is three more clay. So we need to get a, a fair bit more clay to the point where it might be worth investing in a few more campfires and a few more crucibles just to make this a little bit faster. Hold on. I was just about to make more crucibles. In fact, I did make more crucibles when chat pointed out that that would be silly because we can, of course, just make a bucket, right? So uh, down here, we can craft together a clay ball with some dust to make porcelain clay. And the dust was generated by sifting regular dust. So we're going to need, I think, at least one more. Yeah, because we need three porcelain clay to make one unfired clay bucket. So let's sift another dust. Are you guaranteed to get dust from dust? You are not. It's only a 50% chance. So it would be great if we got one here. But statistically unlikely. Yeah, let's put in... Um, we'll, we'll find the last two here. There we go. We got our second dust. From there, we can craft the dust with the clay to get four porcelain clay. That's going to allow us to craft up a, an unfired bucket. We can then smelt the unfired bucket in the furnace, and that should get us a ceramic bucket, at which point we can then just scoop up the water out of the ocean, and we don't have to worry about this setup at all. So at that point, we can just take regular old dust, which of course we can get from sand. And again, we might as well break down some more of this gravel that we have here into sand and then into dust. Because that's going to allow us to much more quickly and easily gather all of the clay that we need. So we do already have one uh, bucket of water in there. That's fine. 
Uh, annoyingly, if there's any water in the barrel already, you can't put a full bucket in, which is very awkward, but uh, it's fairly easy to fix. We just break the barrel, move it over by one so it's no longer connected to that fluid pipe. Then we can just right click our bucket of water in, get our dust, and we get a block of clay. Nice. And once we have six blocks of clay, I believe we want to smelt five of those into blocks of terracotta. And then we want to take three of our clay balls and smelt those into bricks so we can make our flower pot and then our botany pot. And then if we want to upgrade that to a hopping botany pot, thankfully the recipe for this has been tweaked as well to only require a wooden hopper. I think normally that requires um, like a regular Minecraft iron hopper. And there we go. There is our brick. Boom, 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 boom. Five terracotta, boom. And then if we craft that with a wooden hopper, we get a hopper botany pot. You want the hopper version. Uh, this is just much more automatable. And so we'll claim all of our rewards here. Fantastic. You do want to not make the mistake that I just made. So the mistake I made is that I did all of the crafting without putting the item in my inventory. So if you want a quest to complete, like this botany pot quest, the item has to touch your inventory. So for me, I did all of the crafting up here and I never put the botany pot in my inventory. If you want to get the quest reward, you've got to make the item, take it out, put it in your inventory, then craft it into something else. Uh, that's fine. I'm certain we're going to make another botany pot fairly soon here, so we will complete this quest uh, fairly shortly. But what we should be able to do now is take this botany pot, and we might have to do some island reorganization here, because I think we want to try and make this a little bit condensed if we can. But we want to take the botany pot, and we want to start growing something. Now, I'm not quite sure what the best course of action here is going to be in terms of what we grow. We could grow pumpkin seeds because both the uh, the pumpkins and the seeds can be turned into uh, into dirt. So to decide what we want to use here, I'm thinking carrots might be a good idea, but it really depends on how fast things grow and then how much you get for them and how much like progress towards the dirt you get. For example, the pumpkin seeds here give you a pumpkin and the pumpkin counts for 166 out of 1,000. So it's still not particularly good. You're still going to need a lot of pumpkins to get a, um, a piece of dirt. The carrots, on the other hand, only give you 100 out of 1,000. So you need 10 carrots as opposed to like eight pumpkins to make one dirt. But I think the carrots are going to be a lot faster in the botany pot. Real quick, I'm going to temporarily place our botany pot down here. And then all we need to do is place a piece of dirt in like so. And then we'll place our carrot in like that. So it does tell you actually in JEI how long it takes. Um, you do want to make sure that you're using the right block though. So for us, we're just going to be using farmland. So it takes 57 seconds to grow. Now when it grows, there is a 100% chance that we get one to two carrots. And then there is a 15% chance that we get an extra one to two carrots. So every minute, we're going to get somewhere between one and four carrots, usually one, sometimes two, occasionally, very occasionally three and almost never four, but we will sometimes get four carrots every minute. Whereas on the flip side, I think the pumpkins are gonna be a lot slower to grow. Again, if we go back over to farmland here, these take, oh no, 57 seconds again to grow. Um, although you do get significantly fewer, you only get one pumpkin guaranteed every time. Uh, you do also get a chance of getting pumpkin seeds, which do count towards the dirt. You can put these into the, uh, the barrel, but you do only get 80 out of a thousand. So I think the carrots are the way to go. And uh, you'll see here, we are slowly but surely uh, growing the carrots here, it's very, very slow, but I don't know if you can quite see that texture is moving. There we go. And so this will produce carrots for us. And I think the ideal scenario here is for us to get just a bunch of botany pots. If we can get a bunch of these botany pots down, we can then get a bunch of carrots growing. We can feed those carrots around into this chest here. And then from there, we can automate the production of dirt, the production of cobblestone, and then, you know, continue that on into uh, gravel, sand, and dust if we get to the point where we can automate it. Of course, for the time being, as soon as this next uh, carrot is grown, what I'll probably do is just grab this botany pot and place it on top of that chest there because that's going to do everything we need it to do for the time being. There's our second carrot. You'll see we've got two there instead of one, which is very nice indeed. Let's take both of these out. Let's grab the botany pot. So boom, we'll put in the dirt and the carrot, and there we go. While we let that do its work, let's sleep real quick, and then let's see about progressing down this uh, quest line here a little bit, because I see there's a quest for an unfired crucible into a fired crucible, and I see our first bucket of lava 
on the horizon. So uh, to make this happen, we are going to need uh, a little bit more clay. In fact, we might have enough clay here because I thought we had more because we do have three lying around in there. That gets us the seven, which is actually more than we need because we get two per craft here. So we really only needed four clay to make this happen. And we also need four dust though, which is gonna be the bit that's slightly trickier because you, there's only a 50% chance of getting dust from uh, sifting it. So we are definitely going to have to get yet more cobblestone and break that down into dust and then try and sift that dust to see if we can't get some of the non-block form of dust. That's seven. 50% uh, of seven is 3.5. That's not necessarily how the odds work in terms of getting uh, the dust. I'm hoping we get at least four dust here. And we did, look at that, perfect. So let's do this and this. We need two, four, six, eight of the porcelain clay. We can then craft that into an unfired crucible. And then from there, we can tell this crucible to get out of here by firing it over in here. Once that's smelted, we can take it. And much like with the uh, wooden crucible, we wanna place this above a heat source to make it faster. Um, I believe if we press U while hovering over it here, that uh, the same heat source is apply. So the campfire here is a good source. It's eight times faster than the base crucible. So let's do one of those. And now what we should be able to do is I believe place cobblestone in here to produce lava which is gonna be easier said than done because we don't have that much cobblestone. Although, can I put in like andesite? I totally can, look at that. That's gonna melt down the andesite. So if I do one, two, three, four andesite, that is gonna slowly but surely um, melt that down into lava. Once we have a thousand millibuckets of lava, AKA a full bucket, we can then extract that using our ceramic bucket that is gonna break the ceramic bucket. Um, as soon as you place down the lava, the ceramic bucket will be deleted because it's not made to withstand such high heats. But the good news is that we should be able to use it to craft the resource generator, which is made with six stone. Again, we can use andesite, granite, diorite, all of those here, which is nice, along with uh, a bucket of lava and a bucket of water. And it says here, this is basically a cobblestone generator. It works for different types as well. This is very useful for us because it's going to allow us to automatically produce cobblestone, which is kind of going to take a lot of, uh, of the strain off of this setup right here. And boom, there is our one bucket of lava. So let's grab our ceramic bucket. Let's extract that. Fantastic. Now we do need another bucket if we're going to get the water. So I'm wondering if I can make this because you can make this resource generator either with ceramic buckets or with lava buckets. I am interested to know, and I am gonna make an iron bucket here. Uh, we could make another regular bucket, but it means getting more dust, which we don't currently have. I'm interested though, if we can mix and match with the different kinds of bucket. It's possible this might not work, but we are about to find out. So that doesn't work. And I think it is the uh, the mixing of um, of buckets here that doesn't work, unfortunately. So we uh, may have wasted our three iron. Although, as I mentioned before, I think we are pretty close to getting iron again. And thankfully, I don't think it's going to be too difficult for us to get one more dust. If we get incredibly unlucky and don't get a single dust from the three dust here, this is going to be a bit of a pain. But I am fairly confident we will, at which point we can then make Another batch of porcelain clay, fantastic. So we'll get three porcelain clay and then we'll craft up a regular unfired bucket. And once again, smelt that up. Once we have that, we can do the same again. We can get the water, we can get the lava. We can then place in the granite and the diorite. Again, you can mix and match these. It doesn't matter where you put what. And boom, we have a resource generator. And based on the description, I don't know. It says basically a cobblestone generator. I think the idea here and we might actually need an extra, like um, an extra pebble for this, because I think the idea here is that you place a block in and it generates more of that resource. Yeah, it totally does. This is super powerful though, because it means that we could place down a bunch of these and start generating andesite, diorite, granite, cobblestone, stone, a lot of stuff very quickly. Um, I think I would prefer this to generate cobblestone because I don't think I can hammer andesite down into gravel. I can't, I can make crushed andesite, which might be useful in its own regard, but I think that uh, that cobblestone is definitely the thing that we're after. Thankfully, we can reverse engineer some stone here into cobblestone, the vanilla Minecraft way. And then at that point, we have generated, uh, or we have set up an automatic cobblestone generator. 
There is a more advanced version of it here. Uh, it says basically a cobblestone generator works for different stone types as well. This resource generator can be made quicker. So I assume this one is more limited in what it can make. There's only 13 pages of stuff that it can make, whereas this one doesn't actually show what it makes, but uh, I am certain that it can be made faster than this one in the future. For now, though, this is pretty great. And uh, I guess next time we're going to want to come back and try and get something like the auto hammer here. Now, the auto hammer is makeable. It does require copper and tin. So we are going to have to get into uh, a lot more resource generation than we currently have. And it also requires power as well, which we currently don't have. But uh, I think the idea is going to be that we can uh, hopefully automate the turning of cobble into gravel. And then we can start sifting that automatically. Again, presumably in higher tier meshes to get some of the, uh, the higher tier stuff that we are after. Yeah, it looks like we can get poor transformation powder, which is made from dust, pebbles, and flint. And then we can craft that into poor organic matter with lava. We can then craft up a flint mesh and sift the poor organic matter, I see, to get copper pieces, which we can then craft into raw copper, smelt into regular copper. We can do the same for tin. And then we can get the, uh, the flux hammer once we have tin and copper. And then we can start automating stuff. And uh, we also unlock power as well, which is super nice. So next time we'll come back, we'll look at uh, progressing forward down this quest line here to try and get to power and to that auto hammer. Um, we'll also go back, I think a little bit and see about getting a mob farm. That's gonna be something I wanna do sooner rather than later. And I do also want to try and do these chapter challenges as we go along. These don't seem too bad. Uh, we need 16 apples, 64 samplings, 256 leaves, which I think we might have been close to having at some point today, uh, 128 logs, 256 pebbles, 16 rotten flesh, eight gunpowder, and eight bones. So once we set up our mob farm, we can then, you do have to hand these in, by the way, you don't just have to have them. I believe the quest will take them. Uh, but once we do, we get the uh, infinity wand right here. Um, the reward for the chapter challenge two quest line is a jet ski and a compression dynamo plus NBT. So I might even be an upgraded compression dynamo as well, which would be very handy. And then the uh, tier three one is some resonant integral components. And there are even more further down, but I don't want to spoil too much too early on here. Uh, for now though, I'm going to go ahead and drop down our duck sack here. And we're going to go ahead and wrap up this first episode of Seopolis there.